Hello everyone, Edmund24 here. I'm making this video as a response to Ibu Akari. Um, his review of the Legend of Korra. Um, well, for the most part, I do agree and understand his positions, but I can't really think, I don't really think he's 100% correct. Um, I'm a subscriber to him, and I I actually got into him, I actually found him out because of Legend of Korra. Um, so, I'll say that I, I'm actually... I, I'm actually a fan of his videos. Um, I've watched pretty much all of them um, since I subscribed to him. So don't take this into offense at all. I don't mean to insult him. Um, I'm not trying to start a flame war. I'm just trying to digest a lot of what he said and give my opinions and a retort to it. So you record if you see this response. Um, um, it's all love, but I, I have to. I have. I just have to do this. Um, um, for the most part, um, he divides his video into a few sections, characters, plot holes, and a few other um, divisions, but I don't agree with him entirely, mainly on the plot holes. Um, I'm, I'm not going to deny there aren't plot holes. There are plot holes, um, but the ones that he left, I can kind of see being explained away. Um, but um, I'm actually going to just watch the video on a second computer and go step by step what he says and tell and tell you what I think. So um I'll link this in since this is a response we'll probably see this so this no it's it's all love so here I go. Okay, so this first point is pacing. Um, yeah, I'm not going to deny it. Um, the problem with Legend Core, he's right completely on this, um, that half of it was essentially filler and the, half, and the rest of it was completely rushed. Um, I mean, I've seen animes and shows with 12 episodes or 13 episodes done with fantastic pacing. Um, just to give one example, um, Please Teacher, um, it's, a, it's, 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 a, it's a good manga. It's a good anime if you haven't seen it. Go watch it. Um, but... That has good pacing for the purpose of 12 episodes. Um, so he's right on pacing. What I personally would have done is I think I won't I won't say that the necessarily the pro bending fuck was boring. I think it should have been spread out a little bit more. We should have gotten well. The first two episodes are fine. Just uh, those two are fine. You can do the third one as kind of like the pro bending stuff. I would have done two more episodes of airbending training, then go to the pro bending kind of semifinals and finals, and then do the whole revelation of Amon. That I think could have been, I think it could have been spread out more. And it, it, even if they had like produced a medical order, it really wouldn't have affected the um, story that much. Um, so pacing is right. So I'm actually, since this video is pretty much an hour long, um, and I don't want really to make an hour long video, I'm going to skip around to certain points. Um, he hasn't annotated in his video, actually, so um, I'm going to just skip around. Um, hold on. All right. Second point, character development. Um, I personally think that we got character. I, I'm satisfied with the character development because we got character development for characters that I liked. So I'm going to deny for the, for the main purposes of the protagonist, um, like Tenzin, Korra. Korra's character development was lacking. That lacked. Um, and he, he points this out too, so I'm agreeing with him. Um, so next up is Mako. Um, he got, I think, of the protagonists that we did see, got the most character development, but the problem is it wasn't really development. It was, it was a downgrade. I mean, we got, he, his character did change, but it was bad. I mean, at least for the first, like, seven episodes, he's okay, but 
after that, he's just really bad. And I think a lot of the reason people say this is because he essentially cheated on Asami for Korra. So, um, that was lacking. Bolin, um, I think got no character development, um, at all. And his character development wasn't really necessary. Um, I mean, it would have helped his character, but it really, it wouldn't really have affected the story this early on. Um, so, Tenzin, Tenzin was a character that was, he could have gotten character development if they wanted to, but you don't really need to since he is the quote unquote mentor. So, I mean, you can kind of do kind of his Lynn and relationship, but he's married, so I don't think anyone wants to see that. I didn't want to see it, and I'm glad we didn't. Um, Lynn's, Lynn, Lynn Bay Fong, I, I would say. She got the most positive character development. Um, Mako, I think, got more development, but it wasn't really development. It was more of a downgrade. So, Ling got the most positive character development. Um, but her character archetype, I mean, it was good, but it wasn't really something I can start outstanding. Um, my favorite character in the show was Amon. Um, even if he is development, even if he is sort of hip at the end, but I thought he was the best character in the show, and that's really sad when your villain is the best character in the show. So, um, yeah, I'm going to switch over. Hold on. Okay, he talks about Tarlock and Amon, um, like I just mentioned Amon, but Tarlock, what he says about Tarlock is also good. Um, I agree with him. Um, I like how they did the whole um, just nuisance to Tenzin, then false ally, then antagonist, then pure-hearted villain. So that's something I kind of really enjoyed. Um, so now we get to the final section of this video, plot holes. This is where I think I disagree with them the most on, in terms of plot holes. There were plot holes, but I think they can be explained away. Um, in regards to bending, at least energy bending, um, yeah, I think that was done okay. I mean, he says that dead people can't bend, which actually I, I don't even consider Aang as dead, but, like, he's more of a spirit, and there is been, this is what's established in the first series, that series can essentially bend. Um, naming the lion turtle. Um, how Korra achieves, learns air, um, energy bending, I think is perfectly reasonable um, based on the canon that we have in the first series. Um, now he says um, the whole Korra achieving the avatar state, that yeah, he's right on that. Um, there are interests in the show that the Avatar should have activated. Um, there really were. There were, I think. Well, actually, no. The, I, what do you think about it? Actually, this isn't. He's wrong on this, and I'll explain why. Because the Avatar state was explained in the first series as a defense mechanism designed to empower the current Avatar with all the knowledge and experience. All those flashbacks, even though they were small and short, they were temporarily manifestations of the Avatar state. So if we, if for the purposes of writing and for kind of character development for Korra, we got small, like a, maybe a two-second flashback, and then three episodes later we got a six-second flashback, and then towards the end of the series we got a full, with this straight-up explanation, like that's what we got. Those were temporary manifestations of the Avatar state. So her activating the Avatar state, even though it was poorly timed, the buildup was there. So there he kind of has a – there he's wrong. Um, there were temporary manifestations of the Avatar state. Um, so that's not totally wrong. Um, now let me go back to this video. Hold on. Yeah, Amon's death was really – when I saw that um, – well, since I was a subscriber, so I knew the moment that happened, he was going to hate it. I knew it. Um, and rightfully so. I mean, it was kind of a cop-up. It was, it was a full-time cop-up. That was a cop-up. Um, 
the problem that I had mainly with the Legend of Korra is that, at least in terms of Amon and Tarla, I felt their character backstory should have been kind of reversed. Um, because if you look at the, I think it's the 11th episode, where Tarla's giving the backstory of he and Amon, or Noah Talk, whatever, um, he says that he was kind of, I would say, the black sheep in the family. He didn't want to use blood bending. Um, and Amon was kind of a prodigy blood bender. So I think those characters, I think Amon should have been kind of like the black sheep and Tarl should have been the prodigy bender, um, blood bender. And I would also have Noah talk. I wouldn't think that's just, you don't have to make him older or younger, but make him a non bender. Um, that I think should have occurred. Uh, there was no reason why you needed to make come on um, a waterbender. And that all, that's another thing. Um, this He doesn't mention this, but this is a small talk. Waterbending has gotten way overpowered in the Avatar universe. I mean, they say the bending, no, they're not equal. They're really not. Well, waterbending is the most powerful element in, in the world, at least in the Avatar world. Um, I mean, what do we have? You can control people's bodies. You can heal people. And you can revive the dead with water bending, and you. I'm sorry, no. The, the whole the the healing aspect I can buy, the controlling people's uh, bodies I can also kind of buy. But the revival of the dead, really? You can revive the dead with water bending. Yeah. I'm, I can't let that fly. I just can't. Um, and. Okay. Reviving the dead. <laughs> All right, I'm going back to this video. Hold on. Yeah, he also mentions that the plot really wasn't resolved. That's another thing. I mean, since they're doing two seasons and they're supposed to be two separate books. Oh, they're doing four seasons, but they're supposed to be two separate books. I would have ended... I actually saw a YouTube comment. I forget the YouTuber. Um, but I would have had pretty much Tarlock kind of, like, played off as more of the main villain or the main antagonist for season one. Do the whole Tarlock slowly gripping power, getting power. And the, I'm, I have another point, but I'm going to get that. I'm going to get to my second point later. Um, have him as the main antagonist and have Amon just come in at the end of the season finale and spark off Tarlock. Um, which gets me to my second point. Korra was found way too soon. I think that that was the only acceptable moment in the entire series, at least, at least the entire season. Um, in season one, to use straight, direct character development for Korra. That was the only point that I think people would have accepted as this is her character development. This is her time. No, no, nothing else matters at this point. No Mako, no Bolin, no Tenzin, no Lin, no Naga, no Kabu, no Asami. Just her and character development. Have her, I would say, in that box, in that kind of prison cell, for a few days. Like, have her on the brink of death, and then that's when you do the full manifestation of the Avatar State. That's when you do it. Um, because it's supposed to be a defense mechanism that essentially it's a flight of, a flighter, um, fighter, um, I'm sorry, um, a fight or flight response. So if you're on the brink of death and you're starving or dying of dehydration or you're freezing since you was in a kind of a, I would say, I think it was the mountains or it wasn't the, it wasn't the South Pole, but it was like some icy mountain, like snowy mountains. If you're freezing to death, that's when I think you should do the manifestation of the Avatar State. Um, so, yeah. Um, that's pretty much all I have to say. Um, that's really all I have to say, really. Um, I really hope he doesn't stop the series. Um, I mean, I understand why he has problems. And like I said, um, I'm, I do agree with him on some points. But I think you, you have to give leeway. Because the first season of Avatar was 20 episodes. This was 12 um, even though he is right that they, this was rushed, this really was, um, I really think that he shouldn't drop the series. So, 
signing off at Ben24.